Hello and welcome to another final viewing of Studio 666. The Foo Fighters are looking for a place to record their 10th album. It's monumental. It's the 10th album of the Foo Fighters, and they want to make a grand, epic record. Problem is, Dave Grohl doesn't have anything recorded, doesn't have anything written. Everything's all in his head. And the task of finding a place to record is given to the manager, who seems to have a place in mind already. And it just so happens to be a house that is haunted. Prior to the Foo Fighters moving into this house, there was some grisly murders of a band prior to them called Dream Widow. Dave Grohl is feeling the pressure of writing this monumental album for the Foo Fighters. And in all this and feeling the pressure and kind of sensing there's some kind of evil in the house, he gets possessed by an evil entity whose main goal is to write this mega epic metal song and kill the entire band. This film also stars Whitney Cummings, Will Forte, who plays like a delivery driver. We also have a bunch of cameos in here, which I was, it was pleasant to see them. I was fascinated to see Kerry King as Dave Grohm's drum tech. That was pretty funny. We got to see Lionel Richie emerge from Dave's subconscious as he's trying to write a song and basically writing one of Lionel Richie's past hits. We also get a cameo from John Carpenter, who plays a producer working on the album with the Foo Fighters. And that was fun to see. And it just so happens that John Carpenter did write some of the music for this film as well. This film was made for fans of music and horror altogether. Now, it may not be for some fans of the Foo Fighters who aren't a fan of this kind of gory horror. I wouldn't say it's for them, um, but it is for horror fans nonetheless. If you're just a straight horror fan, I feel like you would enjoy this film. It is a lot of fun. If you are just a Foo Fighters fan, this film might catch you off guard because it is very different from their music videos. Although, although their music videos are funny, they have a sense of a, a bit more lightheartedness to them. This, this film goes full force with the gore, with the, the effects, and it's very bloody, and but just a lot of fun though. Now we all know the Foo Fighters are not actors, they are musicians. So their acting in this was, I thought it was quite good considering it is their first time. You can tell that they were forcing some of those uh, lines and it was a bit cheesy, but I think that gives to the whole fun of the film. They're not taking themselves seriously as the Foo Fighters hardly ever do. I doubt any of them will be contenders for any Oscar worthy performances in the future. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, we'll see. There were some funny moments in this film where Pat Smear seems to be eating Doritos all the time and he's just eating a bunch of snacks or he's obsessed with snacks. <laughs> it was kind of endearing to see him just walking in his pajamas eating or having a bag of Doritos, which is straightforward product placement. Uh, there was also like whiskey bottles that were in the shot as well with the labels facing towards the camera. I found the references to Pro Gem also whenever they huddle together to give themselves a high five, they always say Pro Gem high five. Dave Grohl kind of calls out one of the songs, or in fact, I hear remember two of the songs from the Pro Gem 10 album. I was kind of curious as to why Dave Grohl picked that particular band, that particular album to kind of poke fun at a bit. If anybody knows anything, any sort of backstory to that, please let me know in the comments. I would, I thought that was kind of funny. The musical references are fun as well for anyone who's, anyone who's like an audio geek or a production kind of person. It was just kind of funny to see them do the clap test in the room, you know, and he's, he's really trying to figure out uh, the sound of the, of the room and stuff like that. And it's, most people do this whenever they're trying to record in certain areas to see how the reverberation is in the room. Uh, but every time he claps, there's like a little demon face that pops up. Um, they don't see it, but like it seems like that's what's being heard whenever he does the clap test. Now, I thought that was pretty funny. And just that little scene, like I mentioned before, Kerry King is Dave Grohl's drum tech or Taylor Hawkins' drum tech or the Foo Fighters' drum tech in general. Dave Grohl's moving the snare around to try and see where it would sound perfect. And he keeps on moving it like an inch to the left. And then, well, maybe just a little bit more and then maybe put it back. You know, it's... It's ridiculous nonsense. I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, recording artists do this or even engineers or producers do this. Um, I've, never, I've never done that. I've never been in the studio, so I have no idea. Now, talking about the gore a little bit more, uh, the kills are pretty over the top. And there's like one kill in particular that is very funny. And I think they're, 
I think this guy is their actual piano player, but he's quite funny in this film. Very hippie, very over the top, uh, just trying to get laid throughout the whole movie. And that one scene, I'm pretty sure they even showed it in the trailer. I, I couldn't stop laughing when that scene happened because it was just over the top. And the practical effects didn't seem that great for that particular scene. You can tell that they're dolls or mannequins or whatever. I think that lends to the fun of this movie and how not seriously it's taken itself. Although a lot of the effects kind of seems like it took from um, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of movies, body horror, like society, stuff like that. The story itself is straightforward. Foo Fighters going into a house to record. Dave Grohl gets possessed. He starts killing off his bandmates, which he does. And there's also a book, an evil book that pretty much is taken from like Evil Dead from the Necronomicon um, that they have to recite to kind of get the evil back to wherever it came from. And they even use it as like a, a weapon shooting the... Uh, like lightning bolt at a uh, possessed Dave Grohl. Overall, I think this film was funny. I think it was a lot of fun. And if you have a chance to watch it in theaters, I suggest you do that. My rating for Studio 666 is 7 out of 10. Again, still has a lot of that fun elements. Not a perfect movie by any means, but still pretty, pretty good for a first try for a band starring in their first film. And they don't know how to act at all. Uh, but I think they did a pretty good job and it was fun. And I hope they do more or they produce more. Uh, films because I would I would like to see more of them and specifically Carrie King put Carrie King in more horror movies I think he did a great job acting shockingly enough not only is he a great guitar player he's a pretty good actor so put him in more horror movies please if I don't even know if he has been in more horror movies uh, but this is the first one I've seen him in and he should be in more so guys thanks so much for listening uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about Studio 666 have you seen it what did you think about it you think the Foo Fighters should do more horror movies I personally think so as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. There will be links down below for any of our merch or anything. If you want to support us in any way, please do so. If not, please just like and subscribe. That would be great. Or share this with someone else who might enjoy it. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye.